Uh, hello and welcome everyone. Um, thank you for attending this seminar. Uh, I would just like to acknowledge uh, my uh, supervisor is Dr. Fadil Basi, and my guide for this uh, research is Dr. Jeff Harris and Dr. Puran Lenya. And uh, I couldn't have accomplished the, the, the success without uh, these three, so I thank them a lot. So the objective of this research is to compare the geology of uh, Ladin Lake and Suezi. And uh, we have collected the data, the geological data of Ladin Lake and Suezi, and then uh, implemented uh, machine learning algorithms to generate uh, predictive mineral maps. So the source of data uh, is Ontario Geological Survey Mineral Deposit. And uh, Dr. Jeff Harris and Dr. Heming Lu has uh, helped me gathering the data and pre-processing it. Uh, the software used uh, in this research is we have used RGIS uh, Pro to prepare the fault and predictive maps, uh, QGIS to analyze and edit the spatial information, and then we have used NMAPBOX to perform the random forest algorithm, and the Python version which we have used is 3.9.12. And uh, this is one of the most important uh, slide of this presentation. Uh, this just explains the workflow of this uh, research. Um, so the initial phase is, which is data acquisition and pre-processing. We have used uh, geochemical, geophysical data, uh, regional faults, known uh, gold deposits. And uh, we have taken these data and then we have performed the imputation uh, with the help of uh, transit leaders and geological experts. So what in which what they have done is they have replaced the missing data um, with some values. So the value uh, for some attributes where we did not have some data, uh, they have used their knowledge and expertise to put uh, to, to replace uh, the missing values. And then we have uh, used the principal component analysis for the dimension reduction. And we have taken those input parameters. Uh, and to construct the classification model where we have implemented random forest and the result of that random forest uh, model I'll be discussing later in the seminar. Uh, today I'll be majorly, uh, uh, majorly I will be covering the, the decision tree and random forest, these two important concepts which we have used in this research. The decision tree is one of the most fundamental concept in machine learning. Uh, whoever wants to uh, step into to step into machine learning, they should start uh, from learning decision trees. So I'll explain a, a little bit about what is decision tree and uh, why we have used uh, this in our research. So this is basically a supervised uh, learning method where if you already know that uh, if uh, we put this input and we are going to get this result in either positive or negative uh, manner in a binary form, then we can use a uh, decision tree. I have also got an example uh, for you guys, which will help you understand this a little bit better. Um, in this uh, Northern Ontario region, uh, this is an observation from the geological expert that wherever we have uh, the less density and less magnetic, uh, magnetic susceptibility, it is uh, good for gold mineral. It, it is positive for gold. So let's say if we use that info piece of information to build our decision tree, then what we would do is we would, uh, in the decision node, we would put density and magnetic susceptibility. And if, it, if we find that low, then we will consider that as a positive for gold. And if not, then we will consider it as a negative. And based upon that, we can build a decision tree with that piece of information. And we can do the same thing with different, different attributes and build our decision tree. Uh, one of the advantage of decision tree is the scale and variant it provides. There are other uh, machine learning algorithms like uh, neural network and SVN uh, in which uh, the input parameter has to be on the same scale. Whereas in decision uh, decision tree, you can use uh, density, susceptibility, and different different uh, uh, input parameter, which not necessarily have to be on the same scale and variant, and still you can use it. And it is very uh, interpretable. So if you, it is not um, unlike 
neural network and SVN, it is very easy to explain to somebody who doesn't have a, a strong foundation of statistics. So if you give them that, uh, give them some in input parameter, and if you are showing them the result that this is a positive and negative, then in the binary tree, it is very easy to explain. One disadvantage uh, we find in decision tree is that it tends to overfit. So let's say if you have uh, considered one attribute, for example, magnetic uh, susceptibility or density, and based upon that, if you have built your decision tree, you may get good accuracy, you may get good result, but you cannot say that it is generalized. It might be if the result might change based upon if you change the region or if you change the attribute, if you change the mineral, the result might change. You you cannot get a generalized result uh, if you use uh, one decision tree. So in order to overcome that uh, con, we have used a random forest, which is a combination of decision trees. So uh, in the input parameters, we have used uh, geochemical, geophysical, and geologic data. And we have built different different decision trees, and we have taken a collection of trees, um, and the combination of all the decision trees, we have taken majority of vote, and then we have used that data to predict mineral prospectivity map. Um, we have also used uh, an evaluation uh, uh, a classifier, which I'll explain you in a very brief. This slide look this slide might look very complicated, but I'll try to explain it in a very simple term. So actually, so in the decision tree, what uh, one, one thing I missed was the entire data which we have, we have split the data into two parts. So two third of the data we have taken uh, for training and one third of the data we have taken for the testing. Now, one may say that because the distribution of the data is very random, one can doubt the accuracy of uh, the result. So in order to avoid that, what we have done is, we have divided the testing data into 10 different sets. So each time we will implement random forest with uh, one particular uh, test set and the remaining will be training data. And we have done that 10 times. So the reason of doing that is because we, are, we can cover entire data set. And uh, what we have done is we have implemented that 10, uh, random forest 10 times. And the result which we have got, we have basically taken the mean of that uh, result. So this is one of the data integration model result for Ladder Lake area, where we have uh, taken 127 gold deposits uh, and 10 sets of randomly selected points. Uh, wherever you see uh, a red, uh, it, show, it shows the high pros higher prospectivity for the gold. And wherever you see the blue portion, it shows the lower prospectivity or no gold. So this is one of the data integration model result. And uh, this is one of the statistics which uh, we, uh, when we implemented random forest with the help of NMAP box, uh, we have got uh, more than 95% accuracy uh, with that, uh, which we perform on the known gold deposits. And uh, so, uh, so far I have only able to implement that for the ladder lake area. In future, I'm going to uh, use the same methodology and I'll also consider if I can implement different machine learning algorithms and see if I can get even better result for Swayze. And uh, one possibility we see that uh, so far the work we have done is everything is on 2D. So in future, we may extend our work into 3D. And uh, currently, we, I'm also writing a paper uh, a start, on a study of faults uh, along with Dr. Jeff Harris, and that is in progress right now. And uh, yeah, I've also created one repository on Git uh, where I put the codes if uh, any geological expert wish to use uh, the work, they can also use it and expand it. And they can even use it for different region. If like uh, what I have done is for ladder lake, if they want to use the same data for from a different region and perform the render for us, they can use this data. And what I've done is I've also put the results there. So in order to, if they, if they want to just test uh, the code, they can use it for ladder lake and see if 
they are getting the same result and they can use the same code for different regions in order to get the results which they wish. So that's it for today. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer. Great, thank you very much. And I like the the uh, slide deck you use. It's a metal earth <laughs> Okay, so are there any questions? Thank you, Gary. Uh, maybe can you explain a little bit more what are, what's the difference between publishing and other techniques or the branding boards? So uh, in uh, in random, so it also depends on what kind of data we have. So the team with which I was working. What we found is, uh, so decision tree you can use in different different algorithm uh, like that you can take that as a base, and then we can use it with different algorithms. So we begin with decision trees, which was very easy and which was easy to explain and easy to implement. And that what we did is we implemented random forest because the kind of data we have, uh, they have a they had a different scale and different variant. Now, in other algorithms, what we have to do is we have to, if we have uh, the input data from different, different scale and different, different variant, we have to do the data pre-processing and bring everything on the same scale and same variant in order to process the machine learning algorithm. Whereas in decision tree, uh, in random forest, you are skipping that part. So uh, maybe in, when I work with the Swayze data, then at that time, I might try to work on the data pre-processing part and try to see if I can get all the data on the same scale and same variant and try to implement uh, different algorithms. Thank you. Okay. Any questions from students here in the in the room? Yes, sir. So how do you limit the number of decision trees? How do you limit like uh, what is the kind so of there is a one uh, on QGIS there is a there is a way you can uh, give how many decision trees you want to generate. So it's on the software. We, uh, you you no, can you can limit. There is no set criteria that uh, based on this information you can limit the numbers. You can limit, but the criteria like there is no set criteria. The software allows to put any value. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm curious. Is your source data all from Metal Earth, or have you brought in data from other other sources? Uh, so I think to to be honest, uh, I have just used the data which Dr. Jeff Harris has provided. Okay. So he, I, I'm not sure like if he has used different sources. Yeah. But uh, from what he has mentioned to me is the major majority of all the data I have used is from the Ontario Geological Survey. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Nick, uh, one quick one. Can you go back to your map? I, I noticed on like your prospectivities, these long, thin, linear like paths. Mm -hmm. oh, is that fitting to one of the particular data types? Yeah, those they look like they're following maybe faults or something. Is that... uh, for that part, I'm not very really sure, but uh, if Quran can. Uh... Yeah, there are the structures that you use. Yeah, okay. those those are major faults, guys. This is Jeff talking. Those are major faults. So maybe you could just explain what the actual data that you input into your random forest algorithm was. So I guess it's major faults was one. What were the other ones? So if I go back to the workflow there. So for the input, we have uh, actually I have cut short. Uh, some of the portion in the workflow because it, it was making it look like very complicated. But uh, for example, in geophysics data, we had uh, susceptibility, density, and resistivity, and uh, there was a list of uh, data in the workflow. So for input parameters, we have used uh, in geochemical and geophysical data in the region false. So it was mentioned, but uh, in the last list, we cut short in that. Okay, you had a question. Uh, Could you elaborate what you mean by getting the data on the same scale? So, yeah, that is something which we have to explore because right now the uh, kind of data which we had, uh, we couldn't find a way to bring them on a scale. Maybe you can. What you can do is, for example, let's say if you have a 
some data which you can rank them uh, percentage wise if you are taking some one input parameter which has a different scale and second input parameter which has a different scale and if you are bringing everything together in sort of a percentage then uh, you can bring them on the same scale let's have a, a mm -hmm. quick one i see the use gold funds could you use any other like economic minerals for this or it's just primarily gold uh, yeah i think in this uh, research i haven't covered that but uh, uh, one of my fellow Dr. Heming Liu, uh, he has used it uh, for tungsten and different uh, minerals as well. Okay. This this model, this is Jeff again. This model was strictly gold or origenic gold. Thank you. Okay. Any questions from anyone online? Okay. No. Well, well thank you, Mahir, then, for giving his talk. Thanks very much. Thank you.